So among other things that have happened this year with this series, uh, the calendar has worked out very well to where this week we have several feast days that are going to be tied together very beautifully. Uh, but we start with the commemoration today of Our Lady of Mount Carmel on July 16th. The 17th of July is the Solemnity of the Nativity of my mother and of my godson, Jose. It's also the historical commemoration of the Blessed Martyrs of Compiègne. It's French, so I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. These are Carmelite sisters who were murdered during the <coughs> French Revolution. The, we commemorate Holy Elias, but in modern parlance, again, for whatever reason, we call him Elijah on the 20th of July. He was the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. Uh, he is the one who challenged the infidel King Ahab and the prophets of Baal demonstrating before the people miraculously that the Lord is God and then slaying all of the false prophets. He was also assumed into heaven and appeared at the transfiguration of our Lord. We commemorate Holy Daniel the prophet on the 21st of July. And July 22nd is the feast of Saint Mary Magdalene, the great penitent, the one who wept for her sins over the feet of our blessed Lord, dried them with her hair, and then anointed them with costly perfume. One of the debates in the church, which I will not enter into, uh, which will probably never be resolved until we get to heaven, is whether Mary Magdalene was the same Mary who was the sister of Martha and Lazarus. There are people with very strong opinions on either side. The scriptures can be read two ways, and the history of the church also has varying traditions in that area. And so with the iota of humility I have, I am not going to address it. It is interesting to note, though, that uh, the ancient popular tradition of the inhabitants of Provence in France, which says that uh, Martha, Mary, and that may be Mary Magdalene and Lazarus, after being cast out by the Jews, arrived by boat in Marseille, in southern France, settled there, and Lazarus was, became the first bishop of that city. July 22nd is also the date to please God of the heavenly birthday of Ryanina Hulsa, the younger brother of one of my close friends at the time. He was one of my mentorees. He was killed in a car crash, not his fault, but uh, hopefully that is the day that will be celebrated. He celebrates his heavenly birthday. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful and departed rest in peace. Now, we spoke last week about sacramentals. And like all sacramentals, we need to appreciate their simplicity. And in light of today's feast day, I want to speak about the sacramental of the brown scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. We're going to go back before Our Lady and start with Elijah, who just mentioned. He is connected to Mount Carmel. That confrontation between Elijah and the false prophets of Baal took place on Mount Carmel. And it's also the place where he prayed uh, that the drop would be lifted, the drop would be lifted, that was caused by the infidelity of the Israelites. Uh, and when he sent his servant as a lookout, he saw what a small cloud arising from the sea in the shape of a foot, which the fathers see as a sign of that heel which will crush the head of Satan, as first proclaimed in Genesis. That is Our Lady. The chapel that is on Mount Carmel, there's a picture of it in the bulletin, as well as the order of hermits there, which we know as Carmelites, were the first to be dedicated to Our Lady. This isn't the place to speak about devotion to Our Lady in particular. I do that often enough, so we're going to simply say whatever applies to our devotion to Our Lady, the validity, the necessity of the devotion to Our Lady also applies to things like her scapula. On the 16th of July, in the year of our Lord, 1251, our Blessed Lady appeared to St. Simon Stock, who was, at the time, the Superior General of the Carmelite Order. She presented him with the brown scapular, which became part of the Carmelite habit, and said, This shall be a privilege for you and all Carmelites, that anyone dying in this habit shall not suffer eternal fire. Now, until this time, the distinguishing characteristic of the Carmelite habit was a cloak which was modeled on the cloak of Elijah, who was basically the founder of the Carmelites, 
that he let fall as he was being taken to heaven in a fiery chariot. But since the time, of course, the, the brown scapular has become the signature of their habit, and the scapular itself, although different colors, was adopted by different religious orders. <coughs> not only will Our Lady not suffer the members of the confraternity of the scapular to be lost, she also revealed to Pope John XXII, I, the Mother of Grace, shall descend on the Saturday after their death, and whomsoever I shall find in purgatory, I shall free, so that I may lead them to the holy mountain of life everlasting. The reason that this event, uh, this, uh, sorry, this sacramental, this devotion is so important is because the wearing of the scapular, like many other of our devotions to Our Lady, is an act of veneration of confidence and love in our Blessed Lady. It is a constant, silent prayer for her protection. So why a scapular? Why should we wear it? There's a couple of uh, good reasons for having a sacramental like this. St. Alphonsus Liguri said, just as men take pride in having others wear their livery, that would be a uniform that is a mark of a servant or an official. So the Most Holy Mary is pleased with her servants wear her scapular as a mark that they have dedicated themselves to her service and are members of the family of the Mother of God. This is similar to when two people are in love and they uh, share some kind of a token that the other person wears for the sake of their love of that other person or in a much more mundane regard when people wear the jersey of their favorite team or player. We can also see in the scapular of Our Lady a part of her mantle under which we gather trusting in her motherly protection. One of the most beautiful images we have is when our, of Our Lady painted images is one where she's holding her, plant, her mantle or her cloak open and we are gathered beneath it. As Saint Ephraim the Syrian said, O most holy virgin, receive us under thy protection, if thou wilt see us saved, for we have no hope of salvation but through thy means. Another image of what the scapular signifies comes from Pope Benedict the Fifteenth. Let all of you have a common language and a common armor. The language, the sentences of the gospel, the armor, the scapular of Mary, which all ought to wear and which enjoys the singular privilege of protection even after death. So, how is the scapular worn and what do we have to do then to be members of this confraternity? Well, the scapular itself should be made of bless you, rectangular panels of 100% brown wool, although what connects the panels can be of various materials and color, although I would suspect any of the devotion of someone who did something to deliberately hide the fact that they're wearing a scapula. There is permitted for legitimate cause and not laziness or, or discomfort only, a scapular metal which has Our Lady Mount Carmel on one side and the scapula on the other. This was permitted because, for example, in tropical climates, you had the issue of the cloth deteriorating rapidly or the germs cultivated in the moisture, et cetera, et cetera. So there are legitimate reasons. For example, also maybe a true allergy to wool, but it should only be worn as necessary. The scapular can be covered in plastic as well. It's worn over the shoulders with one part hanging in front and the other hanging in back. It may be fastened to one's clothing. It does not have to be touching the skin to be worn. One should always, however, wear the scapular and not simply take it off for convenience, except for maybe bathing. I would say for bathing, swimming, if you really need to, you can also wear the scapular metal in those instances, as long as you are not treating the scapular as some kind of a talisman and operating out of fear. It is, however, necessary also to be enrolled in the scapular, to be invested. And this now can be done by any priest because we all have permission to do so. Once you are invested, it is not necessary to be invested again. Obviously, over time, your scapular may deteriorate. Uh, you may lose it for whatever reason. Uh, all you need to do is get a new scapular blessed. You've already been invested. 
But to enjoy the benefits of this confraternity, there are three conditions. And these are important, this is the second and third one particularly, of course, because they are one of the reasons why we, how we see that the sca scapular is not magic, it's not a talisman, and it's not purely superstition. The first, obviously, is you have to actually wear the scapular to be a member of the confraternity. <coughs> the second one is to observe chastity according to one's state in life. The scapular is not merely a get out of hell free card. We have to deliberately observe chastity for our state in life. And we must daily recite the little office of the Blessed Virgin or observe the fasts of the church together with abstaining from flesh meat on Wednesday and Saturday or with the permission of a priest, say five decades of Our Lady's rosary or with the permission of a priest substitute some other good work. And any priest may dispense the members of the confraternity from the office allowing for the substitution of the rosary, which I gladly do. I'd like to hear if you can come up with any reason why you think I should give you anything other than the rosary, though. So. Now, obviously, whenever there is a lack of faith, or maybe a weaker faith than there should be, there can be questions and doubts, and these are not actually a problem. We want to understand our faith and why we do things, and there's no reason why we should not ask questions and seek to understand why things, especially things like the scapular, which can seem very strange or foreign to Christian understanding, is actually something that's very bad. But while we should seek to understand, neither do we tolerate attacks on things like this. Father Clark reminds us that any attack on the scapular is an indirect attack on the mother of God. And again, I'm not referring to questions. Questioning is a legitimate thing. I'm talking about outright attacks. Satan hates our lady. And he hates anyone and anything associated with our lady. And we can see that in a dramatic way with the martyrs that we're commemorating this week. So contrary to the propaganda taught in schools and in the media, the French Revolution was evil, completely evil, especially in its attack on the church with the murder of countless priests and religious. The convent of nuns that I mentioned earlier, Combein, are were Carmelite sisters who refused to run and instead collectively offered themselves to God as a sacrifice for the end to the horrors. They were arrested and they were decapitated at the guillotine one at a time as they were chanting the Salve Regina. The next day, the reign of terror. The Catholic Encyclopedia article on the scapular says it better than I could. Like the rosary, this scapular has become the badge of a devout Catholic and the true servant of Mary. So, let's conclude then, as I spoke about last week, the symbolism and the blessing of the, of the St. Benedict Medal. I want to do the same thing speaking about prayers of the blessing and the investiture of the scapula. But in this case, I'm actually going to do the blessing and the investiture for those who are prepared. So if you would like, please come on up now. If you have a scapula that you haven't actually had blessed, if you have a scapula that you don't think has actually been blessed yet, you should come up anyway and get it blessed. Uh, if you have a blessed scapula but you haven't been invested, you should come up too. If you don't have any scapular, you'll have to buy them after Mass because I don't have spare right there. So just go ahead and put your scapular on the rail fence. Lord, show us your mercy. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to thee. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Savior of the human race, sanctify by your right hand these habits, which are to be worn by your servants in love and devotion to you and your blessed mother, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. By her intercession, may they be defended from the evil foe and persevere in your grace until death. We ask this of you who live and reign forever and ever. Take this blessed habit. And call on the Most Holy Virgin. That by her merits, you may keep it spotless. by her from all adversity and attain everlasting life. By the power granted me, I receive you as a partaker of all the spiritual favors which by the merciful help of Jesus Christ are enjoyed by the religious of the Order of Carmelites in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, bless you, he who graciously chose you for the confraternity of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. We pray to her that in the hour of your death she will crush the head of the ancient serpent, so that you may finally possess the palm and crown of the everlasting inheritance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.